Hello and welcome to Mythcast episode number 10. I am your host, Clan Mythology's very own vocal terrorist, Jesse Vokter Rain. Today we are taking a look at a replay from the Clan Mythology player here in the green. He is Amanda, one of our German players, and uh, plays Zerg. Now, opposing him is a Heralds of Apocalypse member, uh, the light blue Protoss, known as Fate. Fate, uh, we recently met during a clan war uh, between Clan Mythology and Heralds of Apocalypse as we prepared for the Dutch Starcraft League, which, by the way, guys, is this Saturday in Den Haag. So you guys need to be getting yourselves down there if you're not planning to already. If you want to meet the Mythology players, see them hopefully win the semi-finals and the finals and take that DSCL Team League trophy. Um, that is where you need to be. But that's where we met Fate, and Fate's been hanging around. He's been practicing a lot with us lately, uh, trying to show off how good he is. And that's what part of this was. Uh, he thought he'd have a game against Amanda, and we'll bring him here on Mythcast. So one of the things I'd like to hear from you guys, the people who watch this, get yourself posting in the comments what you think of Fate as a player. That's what I'd like to know, and I'm sure he'd like to hear it from everyone who watches this as well. Uh, now we can see Amanda going with the slightly earlier pull. Um before the hatchery. Uh, not the most uncommon of things, as uh, Protoss can be continually annoying with this kind of hatch blockiness. And so quite often you see players just uh, go pull first just in case. As it is, Fate sees, uh, I'm not scared, there's no 10 pull, there's no craziness coming at me, so I'm happy to put my forge down. Now the thing is, I do not know about this as a, as a wall off. Like, there is a lot of space here left to be covered. Uh, I don't know what that was. Was that someone attempting to send me a message when I'm busy? That was a strange noise. Nonetheless, we'll continue and we will be seeing Amanda taking his hatchery, one would expect. The initial four zergs just to chase off that probe and as we can see he's already looking towards taking his third. So he knows uh, what his opponent is doing. As we can see he is already aware of the expansion as well. And so yeah, we are going to see a bit of a strange wall off here. Um, one I don't think I'm a big fan of because it exposes this pylon. I'd have preferred this pylon a bit further back and the forge here. But there we go. He's going to be doing this, uh, putting the gateway there. And I assume using the cyber core to kind of block off the last bit here. But that is going to leave, unless he puts the cyber core here, which does leave the cannon um, protecting them. But still it leaves two points of potential entry. So I'm still not the biggest fan of that. But there are protest players who just like to build their wall offs weirdly. And we have to accept that, we have to put up with that. Meanwhile, Amanda is going for the double hatch, so that is perfectly fine. Nice safe opening, making sure nothing's getting blocked. And at this point, well, his opponent doesn't know. He will find out uh, very shortly. Once Fate comes in and sees this, he will know that this is also here. Because really, there's no reason to take this without taking your expansion, unless this is uh, in the process of being blocked off, which it was not. Uh, so everything is opening up very, very standardly for these players. That's good to see. When you're looking to get the measure of a player, one of the best ways to do that is by looking at his standard plate. Now, we do not yet have a cyber card. Okay, finally that's going to come down. And yeah, that is going to be behind here, so I really don't like this wall off. I just have to be honest about this. Sorry if you're watching Fate, but this is the kind of criticism that players need. Uh, this pylon should not be able to be hit. This cannon should not be able to be hit. You can wall this front off and effectively hide these two points of weakness, as it is now. Uh, say your opponent decides a bailing bust, he can hit that cannon directly, he can hit this pylon and this pylon directly, effectively creating three points of entry into your base, which would then be a lot harder to force on. Whereas if you build it properly with the, for uh, with the pylon behind here, and then a forge, sorry, then a forge uh, gateway with the cannon behind it, uh, cyber core and then just one pylon there's only two points of entry and one of those can be blocked by a zealot like this uh, where he would stand there and the other can be blocked by a force field so that's just uh, you know one way of looking at it as we can see Amanda going up for uh, a roach build after this only at this point getting two gas getting the two at his expansion rather than up in his main just so that if his uh, opponent scouts uh, he won't necessarily have full information by only scouting one base if he comes in and scouts this and sees no gas, he can kind of assume that there are gas up here. Uh, but if he comes in and scouts two gas, but he isn't able to scout up here, what does he know? Well, he knows oh, there's at least two gas. Is there four gas? Is this heavy tech? He doesn't know. And uh, I really like that from players. That's just one of the things that players can do to keep their opponents in the dark. Now, we're going to see a Stargate follow-up 
from Fate. Uh, not particularly non-standard. Stargate, very, very strong nowadays. He is going to move up with a Zealot, a Stalker, and a Mothership Core. This is a lot less standard. Normally when we see this pressure, um, you actually throw in just a few Zealots and the Mothership Core. You don't bother with the Stalker. And as it is, there are probably enough Lings out to stop this from happening. And this Sling, I believe, did spot that. I don't know. He may have been blocked by the line of sight blockers. It looks like he was, because now the Lings are going to be right the other side of the map. And we do have an Oracle on the way. So now the Lings are going to start to come back as they realize that, well, something bad is happening. And that something bad is a Queen Kill. So a Queen Kill at this stage in the game, already pretty nice for Fate. Not the kind of thing you can necessarily expect. But uh, this Mothership Core is being hurt. He needs to keep that alive uh, for definite. And now with three Queens out, well, it needs to recall. Otherwise, that is going to die. Um, as it is, he's also going to lose this Stalker. He's trying everything he can to get that second Queen kill. But Queens on creep faster than... Uh, well, the same uh, speed as Stalkers, rather. So that Queen stays alive. Doesn't get the Mothership Core kill, but kills the Stalker and the Zealot. So going to feel quite nice about that. Um... There's enough at home right now to defend for fate, because if he just pulls the sentry back here, if he doesn't leave it out there, he can efficiently force field this. And uh, just a few lings will not be enough to get in. But man, does Amanda ever feel safe. Look at this. He's up to 42 drones. He's making another 10. Now, he is aware that... Um, I don't know if he knows for sure about that Stargate. No, he does. So that's the reason for the spores. The spore is ready. The queens are ready. This oracle should not be doing anything. As it comes down here, it should be caught by this spore crawler. Uh, it's put in a slightly odd position, unfortunately, so it can attack here. But the queen should be able to push it into range. Needs to be careful. Uh, having pulled all three queens down is not necessarily the best idea, uh, as it means more and more mining time is lost for Amanda. So his spore crawlers were in a very, very strange position, and that has cost him... Uh, a few more drone kills than it should have cost him. He does lose five drones, but the Oracle goes down. And right now, he he has enough of an economy boost to not worry about that too much with those three bases up. Of course, Fate is going for the third base now at a decent time. He's getting a lot of Phoenixes out. Uh, Phoenixes tend to be very, very good against uh, Zerg plays. You can use them to uh, not so much harass mineral lines anymore because of those uh, Spore Crawlers and their better positioning now. But it'll still be useful to pick off Overlords to pick up uh, anything horrendous coming at him. You can, of course, pick up uh, Burrow Swarm Host as well if your opponent goes that route. And I'd like to see him follow this with something else, like Void Rays, or in this case, well, Colossus. Now, the thing is, these Lings actually got in here, so they're aware of this base. They're not going to get out again, but they know this third base is up now, which is going to, sh or should trigger Amanda, to uh, do some kind of heavy pressure or to expand himself. And that's what Amanda's doing. He's double expanding while putting on some fake pressure with just some speed links. Nothing special. Now, these four phoenixes are going to come in. They can potentially pick up this queen, but there is a spore crawler protecting it. As it is now, they're going to start picking off overlords. I'm being a general pain. This queen needs to be careful. Yep, it's going to get caught here. More queens coming out to defend it, though. Uh, there should be enough of those phoenixes to kill that queen. Oh, great transfuse there by Amanda, keeping that queen alive. And now these phoenixes have to get out of here. Uh, that's one phoenix down. The queen's not yet killed. Excellent moves there by the Mythology Zerg player, keeping those alive. Uh, a Warp and a Zealots up here is going to force a cancel on this base, but Amanda's not going to be too worried because he does have the base at the southmost position. He'll probably keep this up for as long as possible before cancelling. There we see the cancel go down. But a worry for Amanda is that this third base is now up and established, and there's a fair amount of cannons in here. So uh, Speedling's not going to be all that effective. Uh, he's going to need some more tech. And as we can see with the double evolution chamber and the Hydra Den on the way... Um, that tech is going to be a Roach Hydra composition, which is not unusual for Amanda. Amanda known for his Roach Hydra play. Uh, by the way, guys, if you're confused as to why I'm saying he, uh, when the player is named Amanda, Amanda here is male. Oh, here comes the Phoenixes, but there's only two of them, which is not really enough. And they're just going to hover over these spore crawlers until they get finished and die. But if you want to know why he chose that name, you can go to clan-myth.com. Uh, where you can find an interview that Odin did with Amanda, which does address that issue. So, uh, well, these Phoenixes know that there's a base there, and they also know that there's absolutely nothing they can do uh, with either Zealots or uh, Air because of the spines and spores going down. First Colossus is finished. We do have extended Thermal Lance on the way. We should have a second Colossus coming out to meet him now. We've got a fair few gateways up, but nothing uh, spectacular from Fate. Fate really just kind of... Gearing up, getting these upgrades out. Still only on uh, heading towards 1-1 though. 
which is incredibly late for a Protoss. Having had this Forge up, when you do your Forge Fast Expand, it's uh, very strange to me to not see a Protoss at least have one of those plus ones earlier. Twilight Council is done, so we'll be able to go straight into 2-2, however, and his opponent, Amanda here, is also just working on 1-1, one, one, so he's not going to be behind, and in fact, with Chrono Beast, he can get a decent amount ahead. Now, this one, Phoenix, is going to be a pain in the backside with these uh, Overlords, but Overlords are actually fairly tanky up against just one Phoenix. And now the Hydras are revealed, but that Phoenix disappears. Uh, nice pick off there by Amanda. Not the best use of that Phoenix, I'm going to say. Well, would have been much better used for scouting. Although, um, Fate is now aware of the Roach Hydra composition of his opponent. Now, this army is one that's going to be picked off. It's going to require... Uh, very, very good positioning and a very, very good attack. Now, the addition of the gateways is much needed for Fate. As we can see, his money is building up, so he needs to be able to spend that effectively. But with a good time warp, um, with good force fields, this army can certainly take down a Roach Hydra composition, which is why we see a mana going for the Hive, going for the Enduring Locust, so he can transition into the Swarm Host, and... Um, and then into Ultralisks from there, most likely. And now we're going to see a mana close in, trying to pick down the Colossus straight away. The first Colossus falls, the second one will fall shortly afterwards. There were no good force fields coming out there, and a recall is forced, but the major tech has gone down. Great snipes there by Amanda, keeps a large part of his army alive. And now it's going to be a long time before the massive Colossus that Fate wanted is going to be ready again. And that's going to delay any transition into further tech. He's wanted at least three Colossus, and now he only has the one. And, well, that's what happens when you move out with a smallish army without the uh, without the three Colossus and without good force fields. With better force fields there, he'd have at least had the time to recall. Uh, and now Amanda is the person pushing out on the map. Fate's small army is going to have to be careful here. There is only one Colossus, and there's a lot of speedlings here ready to get in and amongst this army. Once again, there are very few force fields. Those ones are much better, forcing Amanda to pull back. Uh, nice use of the few force fields that he had available to him. Uh, I must say, Fate holding this off quite well, but the problem is holding it off is not going to be enough. Uh, we see some speedlings rallied out, uh, perhaps unintentionally. In fact, I would say almost exactly unintentionally. That's a lot of speedlings to just throw away like that. But nonetheless, could be just freeing up supply for more Vipers and Hydras. Nice composition there. And as we can see, Amanda is now starting to take them out. We have not just one, not two, but three bases going up for him. Uh, a fourth is going to go up for Fate. Uh, so it's nice to see him continue to expand, continue to get that economy up. But once these Vipers are out, man, this is going to be tough to fight against. We actually have now a 205 supply uh, army for Amanda. And only two Colossus for Fate. At max supply, two Colossus. One, two Void Rays in this army as well. There's no critical mass of tech here. It's all very, very slow. We're seeing the Vipers now leech some enemy. They're going to start to pull the Colossus out of there into range of the Hydras. The Hydras not focusing effectively, though. Decent force fields, but there's just not enough of the force fields there for Fate at this point. Amanda loses a lot of supply there. We'll also lose this macro hatch. Um, but one of the Colossus, one of the crucial pieces of tech are down, and we've got 20 more roaches on the way. So if those pop for Amanda, which they should, good time warps. Uh, but once those pop, then Fate could find themselves in trouble, especially if the roaches come in from behind and start to pick off these Colossus. We're going to see now a full-on attack go. The Void Race will be the first to fall, and now the Colossus, he's going to be looking at the Colossus to follow it, but this is a very small army now. More and more units needed for Amanda. They're coming in the roaches one at a time, getting picked up by these Colossus, by these Zealots. That's not good enough for you to mass them up. Amanda losing a lot of forces here. The Vipers going down, the Evolution Chamber's going down. Fate may just have the critical mass of units to do it. Amanda, GG, well played. Heralds of Apocalypse Fate does take this game. A very, very good engagement by him. Amanda unable to snipe the tech that he wanted to snipe, and then unable to reinforce quickly enough. Well played by the Heralds of Apocalypse player. Once again, guys, let us know in the comments exactly what you thought of Fate. It'd be really good for me to see uh, how you feel about his play during that match. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again in the future for more Mythcast.